What's up, everybody? I've got a story I thought would be interesting to share with you guys today. It's about a software engineer that completely went up to my working two remote tech jobs at the same time thing um, by like a million. He got to the point where he could work one hour per week all the while collecting a full-time paycheck. And the really impressive part is that his company was completely satisfied with his work. I'll share the full story with you, then you can decide on the ethics of what he did. But before I get into the story, my name is Jake Farron. I'm a product designer. I'm pretty new to YouTube. So if you have ever pretended to be very concerned about COVID so that your company wouldn't force you to go into the office because working from home is the best thing that ever happened to you, then click that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. All right, let's get into the story. In January of 2016, a man got a job as a software engineer working on a legacy, an outdated software system at a company. As he gets into this new job, he quickly realizes that his job is basically just glorified data entry. So he's given these massive spreadsheets and then he writes SQL scripts or little commands to input the data from this spreadsheet into the system. It was like the most boring kind of work you can imagine, but it was a full-time job, the pay was pretty good, and it was fully remote, which for back in 2016 was pretty awesome. So it allowed him to spend a lot of time at home with his son. After doing the job for about a year and a half, the guy being a software engineer wrote a program that automated the entire process. So what used to take the last guy in the role an entire month to complete, now took him 10 minutes to clean up the spreadsheet and run it through his program. Like imagine that, something that used to take a full month of working all day, nine to five, now takes 10 minutes to complete. Occasionally he would have to email back and forth with the analyst that created the spreadsheet and he'd have to go in and make little tweaks to the program. But all in all, he was spending about one to two hours per week on this job, all the while collecting a full-time paycheck. So he's thrilled now that he has all this free time to spend with his son, but he starts getting a little worried that the company's gonna find out because the results coming out of this program are too perfect. So he starts inserting little mistakes into the data to make it look like it was generated by a human. Six months go by like this. He gets the data from his company, he runs it through his program, and then every week or so he reaches out to the company, tells them that he's completed some portion of the work to have them review it. And he starts to feel bad that he's making a full-time salary while spending so little time working but he's worried that if he comes clean to the company, then they're just gonna take the program that he wrote and get rid of him. Cause it wasn't exactly like a tech heavy company. They could just move him to a different project. If he gave them the program, they would have no use for him and they would probably fire him. But in his moral dilemma, he reasons that the company is getting exactly what they paid for. They were happy with his work. They hadn't mentioned once that they were unsatisfied with what he was doing. So not knowing what to do, or maybe just looking for some social validation, he takes to the internet. This story was posted to Stack Exchange and Hacker News. It has 500,000 views on Stack Exchange, almost a thousand upvotes. On Hacker News, it has close to 700 upvotes and something like 500 comments. We don't get to find out how the story ends, but his story sparked this huge debate and speculation about what is the right thing to do in this scenario. So this is Stack Exchange. This is where the story was originally posted. Is it unethical for me to not tell my employer I've automated my, my job? So I'll link to this um, in the description as well as this, which is the Hacker News thread that you can go dive into it if you want. There were actually a ton of really good topics in these comments about things like how to measure work, uh, what is the employer actually paying you to do uh, with a, like a salaried tech job. But there is one major question or problem that I saw a lot in here that I wanted to dive deeper into in this video. Um, and it's that more work or more output should be rewarded with more pay. But as we all know, it rarely is. I saw several comments like this one. Why should the person who more efficiently does their work be punished with more work when others can do less and still get paid the same. Uh, there was another comment that was, what's the difference between jail and work? In jail, you're rewarded with time off for good behavior. At work, you're rewarded with more work. Ideally, if you are more efficient, if you're better at what you do, if you can work faster, then your manager would see your good work and then you would be fairly compensated for the work that you can do. But what happens most of the time is this. This is the work that a senior product designer is kind of expected to do. Like if you don't do this, then there's gonna be problems where you're gonna get written up or you're gonna get fired. But what if I'm really good? What if I'm very efficient? What if I'm very focused? And I can get this work done in half the time. Then as a good employee, I'll go to my manager and say, hey, I'm done with that stuff. Uh, I can support on other teams because this is, you know, it's not enough work. So then I take on this work and this work. And after a while, I realize that I'm doing more than what everyone else is doing. So you would think that this means you get a raise. And a lot of times it does, but there's a lot of factors at play for raises and bonuses within a company. So you can get rewarded for doing extra work, kind of going above and beyond, only if you ask for it, if the team has the budget, if 
the company's doing well, if the manager likes you, if your manager's manager feels like it, if it's the right time of year. There's so many factors that are out of your control. Hey Jake, how's it going? So I was finally able to get you approved for that raise. Let me pull up the document really quick with all the details. Um, just one second, it's loading. I'll, and I'll send this document to you so you have it with the full breakdown. Uh, okay, here we go. So as you can see, I was able to get you a 4% increase, which uh, I know it's not as big as we talked about, but this is bigger than most of the people on the team. They're kind of in the, in the 3% range. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with your work. Uh, everything is, is great. I think that about covers it. I appreciate the hard work and let's not talk about compensation again for at least another year. Don't bring it up. Uh, and I'll talk to you later. So then this worker, broken, discouraged, sad, realizes instead of doing all this extra work that will most likely lead to nothing, why don't I instead do freelance work where I can guaranteed get paid, start a company of my own, spend more time with family and hobbies and friends, you know, actually enjoy your life, um, get a second full-time job. I realize that this is an incredibly hard problem. I feel for you managers and people that are trying to incentivize people. It's hard to measure work, but because of that, it's hard to get paid more if you're a salaried tech employee. There was one time at one of the companies that I worked at where we had several open design positions and teams that desperately needed design help. So we're like trying to fill these positions as quick as possible. And I went to my manager and said, hey, I, I want to be busier. I want to work more and I want to get paid more. So instead of hiring someone, which I mean, we're having a hard time hiring someone anyway, why don't you let me take that work and pay me as a contractor, just what you would have paid a new hire, which would end up being cheaper in the long run because it wouldn't be like double benefits. You don't have to pay for their equipment. You don't have to pay to train them. So it would have been cheaper to just hire me to do the work as a contractor. He ran it up to his manager and they said no. It's, it wouldn't be possible because there's kind of an expectation that like I should already be doing everything that I can fully booked out. And if I'm not, then I should be able to take on this work just included in my salary. It kind of goes back to the idea of like getting your work done. It's like, what does that really mean? Is your work ever done if you're a salary tech employee? Like as a designer, I work with a product team and I can have all my work done for that team for like the developers can be busy for months in advance because I've got all the designs ready to go for them. But I should be doing research for the next thing. I should be supporting on this other team. I should, there's so much that I should be doing that like your work is never really done. So it's not that, well, if your work is getting done then your company should be happy um, because in their eyes they would say, well, your work's not done. Like, why aren't you doing more research? Why aren't you like all that stuff? But in reality, there is a certain amount of work, like a minimum requirement that if I'm not doing that, people are gonna be very upset and I'm probably gonna get fired. So if I do all of that, the minimum, then people are happy. So to finish this video up, one comment that I saw on Reddit that I think is absolutely true is extra work and productivity translating into reward is one of the best indicators that you're in a good company. Supposedly Google is really good at this. Paul Buhite, he was an engineer at Google. He invented Gmail and was financially rewarded for it. Brett Taylor, also a Google engineer, invented Google Maps and was handsomely rewarded for it. So the conclusion is, uh, I don't know. I guess it's that this is a very hard problem. You managers are doing your best to measure output, to measure effort and to reward that. But there's obviously a lot of gray area. So if you have answers, if you know how to properly incentivize workers, if you know how to get rewarded for the good work that you do, leave us a comment down below. And I appreciate you watching.